Did the 76ers front office mistakes ruin the early career of 2023 NBA MVP Joel Embiid, a player who has been looked at as a generational big man for the last several years? Well, as we all unfortunately know, when it comes to a player's career, the entire beginning is controlled by the team he is drafted to. And during the Joel Embiid era, the Philadelphia 76ers have made some massive mistakes. Trust the process. We shouldn't have. Going in year order, Philly drafted Julio Okafor over Kristaps Porzingis. Drafted Markel Fultz number one over Jason Tatum. Drafted Mikael Bridges, then traded him on draft night. But trade Jimmy Butler's trust, then traded him for pennies on the dollar. Gave Tobias Harris a max extension. And finally, of course, Philly is responsible for the Ben Simmons situation in its entirety, including the trade package they got back for him, which ended in a James Harden fiasco. So a lot of blame has to fall at the feet of the 76ers. But in order to make this video as fair as possible, we are going to look at both sides because that's what we do. And when the spotlight is shined on Joel Embiid, we find for his career, he has shot just 46% from the field in 53 playoff games. Numbers that do not resemble an MVP big, they resemble a 90s point guard. Joel has also had only one season where he's averaged more points per game in the playoffs compared to the regular season. And in the last two years in elimination games, he shot five for 18 against Boston and seven for 24 against Miami. Even in the infamous Ben Simmons series against the Hawks in 2021, when every single single person in the world blame Ben Simmons for that loss. Joel Embiid had eight turnovers in that same game seven and shot nine for 24 with eight turnovers in game six. So what is the story here? Was it the 76ers mistakes that cost Joel Embiid multiple titles or is it Joel Embiid who lies at the center of this blame? So what's up guys, Mike here. And today we are going to cover what exactly went wrong with the process. Why everything completely crumbled and fell apart because I really want to emphasize that not getting a championship out of this group was a complete failure. The Oklahoma City Thunder at least had the Miami Heat, then the Spurs, and then the Golden State Warriors to compete with. After that Golden State Warriors dynasty run ended, the playoffs have been wide open and the 76ers simply did not take advantage. The biggest case of this came in 2019 when playing the Toronto Raptors. In the same year that Toronto would go on to win the NBA championship, the Sixers brought the Raptors to seven games and just needed a stop on this play only it's off the Leonard defended by Simmons is this the dagger If Kawhi does not make that shot, Philly might follow the same path and win the NBA championship. It certainly would have been a possibility, only did you also know, in that 2019 elimination game, Joel Embiid shot six for 18. But before we continue, I'm very excited to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video because SeatGeek is again hooking us up. On SeatGeek, there are over 70,000 live events every single day. And of course, you know that I am excited personally for, I, I really wish I could say the Chicago Bulls, but the NBA season is back. Personally, I'm getting tickets to go see a man Thompson on the Houston Rockets play. That is the number one guy I want to see this season. Also, with the football season in full swing, you can get football tickets to every single team like the New York Jets, my favorite team who have been crushing Zach Wilson, I believe. SeatGeek also has us covered as my favorite part of their app is their rating system where they rate every single deal one to 10 to see if you are getting the best deal. And of course, again, SeatGeek came through for us. With your first purchase at SeatGeek, you could use my my promo code 2k mike at checkout and you are going to get $20 off that's $20 off your first purchase using my promo code 2k mike make sure to click the link in the description to download the SeatGeek app thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back into that video taking a deeper look here into joel's career we find that in elimination games he's shot only 46 for 97 and he also has not had a true superstar signature performance on the other end this brings me to my current point which is Joel Embiid at this point in time is not a generational big man. Nikola Jokic is. Embiid has not proven it. If we compare Joel Embiid's last two playoff seasons at the ages of 27 and 28, ages where you should be in your absolute apex prime, we find that a real generational big man such as Shaquille O'Neal 
puts up giant numbers. Comparing Shaq to Joel is no comparison, but that was a different era. However, when comparing Embiid's numbers directly to those of Nikola Jokic, a man who plays the exact same position in the exact same era, we find that Jokic has had tremendously better stats the last two seasons. So if you do believe in Joel Embiid going forward, if you do believe that he's going to be able to take these hardships, these playoff struggles, build on them and become a dominant center from here on out, I can see that I can be with you. But as of right now, he has just not been that guy. And I know the argument on the other end, and I hear you. Embiid has been injured. He's been trying his best. The 76ers did not get the right players around him. That I certainly agree with. As no matter what, even if Embiid is not Shaq, if the 76ers had simply hit on some of the moves I'm about to list, I will just say I think they definitely would have won at least one championship. At the very least, I think you'll agree that they would have increased their title odds by a lot. As to begin with, the 76ers fired Sam Hinkie after he famously tanked them to multiple high draft picks as he was playing 2K in real life. In the years 2014, 15, and 16, the Sixers won 19, 18, and then 10 games. Yes, 10. Because of this, the NBA seemingly placed Jerry Colangelo and Brian Colangelo into high power positions within the 76ers organization, which ended up completely ruining them. As after that, yes, we did have the odd Tyrese Maxey draft pick, but mostly we had terrible decisions. To be fair, Sam Hinkie himself before being fired would make one horrible mistake. In the draft following Joel Embiid's, Hinky drafted Jaleel Okafor over all-star Kristaps Porzingis. Not a great move, but the real mistakes would come after Hinky left. As in the 2017 draft, Markel Fultz was the hyped up prize and Philly would even go as far as trading their number three pick to secure the number one pick from Boston in order to take Fultz. Looking back though, it's very unclear as to why Fultz was so hyped up. Yes, Fultz was the star on his Washington team, but they won just nine games on a team that had another NBA player on its roster in Matisse Thibel. People have said that Boston only made this trade with Philly because they knew Philly was going to take Fultz at number one, but that seems very risky when we consider that the Lakers could have easily taken Jason Tatum at number two. Regardless of anything, Philly had the number one pick, they could have taken Jason Tatum, and if they had, NBA history may have been completely rewritten. I would say this is one of the biggest what-ifs in recent history. Tatum would have been a perfect fit next to a then all-NBA playmaker in Ben Simmons. Simmons was still playing well back then, combined with, of course, the star level of play in a dominant center in Bede. Star point guard, star wing, star center, the ultimate big three, it was that simple. Instead, Philly took Markel Fultz and his jump shot just disappeared in what was later described as a freak injury. Despite completely missing on the number one draft pick, Philly was still set up to win multiple championships these last few seasons only. Somehow, in 2019, after losing to the championship Raptors in seven games, the 76ers decided to trade Jimmy Butler to the Miami Heat for a trade package that included Josh Richardson. That was the biggest name at the time. The reason behind this trade would later leak out, well, here's Jimmy's own words. Somebody asked, can you control him? If you can control Jimmy, we would think about having him back. I was like, you don't gotta worry about it. Shit, can't nobody control me. For one, I ain't just out there doing no bullshit, but the fact that you trying to control a grown man? Nah, I'm cool. Jimmy Butler would proceed to lead the Miami Heat to the NBA Finals the very next season in 2020, and also in 2023 with arguably worse rosters than the 76ers. Instead of trusting in Jimmy, the Sixers chose to max out Tobias Harris, and if we take a look at the stat comparison between Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris in these last two playoffs, we can see that there's definitely a case to be made that the 76ers traded away all of Joel and Embiid's help. So yes, Ben Simmons did make possibly the worst pass in NBA history, but there was a lot that happened on both ends that got us to that point. And so at the end of the day, I want to know who do you ultimately blame for the 76ers failure? I'll end with if Embiid had stepped up in certain moments and in certain playoff runs, I think Philly still could have won one championship. The playoffs were wide open these last few years. However, with that said, Philly's front office was pretty awful. And so if their front office had made some great decisions instead of critical errors, we could have watched a few Philly championship runs, at least to the finals, and we could still be watching an overpowered Philly team that was competing for this year's title. What a mess the process ended up being. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that.
music. If you're still here while the music is queued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.